上的这个装线飞机，这个这个飞飞行向它就相当于是自己飞到了天上。And also, you, you can see the shape of an airplane. <laughs> We just want to fly the couple onto the sky. This is very creative design for the kite. And for this one, it's with Chinese characteristics. This one is uh, locally made in Thailand. So later on, all of these kites will be flying up to the sky. That depends on the wind power, but now it's quite moderate. Now the contestants, they are preparing. Now they're just showing the kites to the visitors. There's another one being packed in this box in the shape of a plane. This one is another soft kite in the shape of sun representing a cartoon character. We call it a soft kite. So for this kind of kite, it does not have a skeleton or frame. So the air flow will get into the kite, which makes the kite flying to the sky. Let's look at another one. It is in the shape of a ladybird. In traditional kites, they always composed with a frame, but some of them we call it soft kites, which are not have the frame. We can see our foreign friends are very friendly, are very passionate about the kite. So how can they fly this one? So we have a sand back which help to fix the kite. So the kite will not fly away when you lift it up to the air. Nowadays we have so many kinds of uh, kite with this shape or technique. They will not fly up very high. So this one is just for a scenery. We can see they're trying to get the air inside of the kite. Because today we have a very moderate wind. That's why they have to put the air inside the kite. That's the way how they do the preparation. We have so many flexible kites today. For smaller kites, it doesn't look nice when they fly up to the sky. That's why we have so many larger size kites today. Some of the kites are in the shape of creatures, sea plants. So it is quite a magnificent view if you see some ocean creatures flying up to the sky. For example, jellyfish. It is quite extraordinary because you always see those kind of creatures in the sea but today you can see that flying up in the sky. And in Dunhuang, people rarely see ocean or sea. And if we can bring those ocean creatures up in the sky, it's quite splendid. It was so amazed that you can see this kind of aquatic plants or creatures flying up in the sky of Dunhuang. And now everyone is doing the preparation. And the estimated launch time is at 10 o'clock, but of course that depends on the wind power. We have to wait for the bit. 
Now the contestants are making preparations. Let's see more. So for this gentleman, he came from Swiss. Also a big fan of kites. <laughs> and he can speak a few words in Chinese. So for his kites, the design is very unique. It's in the pattern of a US dollar. <laughs> but for the portrait, the figure on the note is actually himself. So actually, uh, he replaced the president's portrait on the note with himself. It's very interesting. And we can see uh, different teams, they have their own designs. Very creative and innovative. So everyone wants to make their work stand out from others. He used to make one, but broken later, which was considered as his uh, representative work with two arrows. So if we see two arrows on the sky, meaning that this artist has been to the competition. And for this one, uh, you can see a pair of eyes. But you have to see it on the sky, it's more clear. It's specially designed. You can see the eyes on the kite. If this one fly up to the sky, you can see the eyes very clearly. And he used uh, different colors to make this kite to show the comparison. With the change of light and shadow, if I wear the glasses, I can see the specialty of this kite. Let's try it on the glasses. Yes, with the change of light, and then you can see the design very clearly, especially when the kite fly up to the sky. It's his own creation. So all of these contestants integrated their ideas into the design of the kite. So this gentleman used to be a very high-ranking official, but after retiring, he became a super fan for kites. And uh, he also invited to different kinds of international kite festival. He's very popular, actually, and each year he will bring different kinds of kites to the festival. This one you can see the foot actually uh, printed and designed onto this kite. It is a square foot. It is a square one and uh, with the shape of a foot and actually you can see the five toes. Mm, I think it's a little bit as abstract. This is a mini kite. 
Is it easy to fly this kind of kite? Yes. With the change of the shape and the design, maybe it poses different challenges in flying up the uh, kite. When we were kids, we used to fly kites in the square in the square shape. This is the most simple one. So he can also make it into multi-piece kite. So become a long string. This is a B. So in the past, uh, we also seen some kites with sound. If we can put some sound technique into the kite, it will be more amazing. Sometimes we put tapes onto the kite. In the past days, some kites have uh, instruments on, and that's also very unique. It's uh, the period boat, boat, so he wears the hat and uh, play as the period. He's very humorous. They really enjoyed it. They regarded kites flying as a way of entertainment and uh, recreation. And there can be many interesting stories happen during the kite flying. And uh, sometimes uh, while they are flying kites, uh, they also enjoy some whiskey and enjoy the sunshine. The air is very fresh, so you see that's uh, very interesting. And we can sense that we need to enjoy our life and we need to adopt a positive attitude toward life. He participated in the Kite Festival worldwide and uh, people all know him. He is uh, very famous. Yeah, he meets friends with the kites. Uh, the cover of the kite won't want to be the barrier of his flying. And uh, why it is flat? Because it's easy to carry on and uh, travel worldwide. If uh, it's uh, the three-dimensional one, it is harder to take it to other places. <laughs> and this big hen is a chicken kite is also his kite. And we can see that they are accelerating the preparation work and it's almost ready. And we are waiting for the wind in order to fly up the kites. And there are more and more visitors here and there are other activities here, including s some 
unique cultural performances in Dunhuang, in, including the local elements and the international elements. And by comparison, these by comparing these two, the visitors can sense uh, the cultural exchange between Dunhuang and uh, other regions. Mr. Yan is from Taiwan. We are on CCTV live streaming. And uh, he's uh, 80, 80 years old. He's been flying the kite for 80 years. He looks uh, very energetic. If you haven't been flying the kites, you may need to sit on the wheelchairs at home. Uh, this one is a three-dimensional chicken. So from the side, you can see it's very beautiful with the upward tail. So you really like uh, chickens. It takes time uh, painting. I painted by myself. And you paint it like it's uh, flying. When it's uh, flying up to the sky, it looks very beautiful. Can you share with us uh, some techniques of uh, kite flying? It depends on the wind. Like uh, today is uh, not very good for flying kites. We need to wait for the proper wind. If there is no wind, you cannot fly it up. If there is uh, some tender breeze or wind, you can fly it up. You bring many kites, uh, small or large. This one, you don't need to fly it uh, too high. And once it's up, as the tail touches the ground, it looks like a flower. There will be a tens of the same uh, of kites and they form uh, like a flower circle which looks very beautiful in our mind we think we need to fly up the kites as high as possible but for this particular kite we need to keep it low yes we just need to keep the tail touching the ground so not only the things in the sky are beautiful we also need to value the beautiful uh, creatures on earth how many flower kites have you prepared? 15 and there will be 15 flower kites on the beach, which will be very flourish. And it uh, is even more uh, particular in Dunhuang, because Dunhuang is a place of desert. And if there are uh, flowers, uh, that will be very special and unique. So how did this come to your mind? I have uh, more than 300 uh, types of uh, kites. I collected them from the world wide. And uh, every year there are new kites. I don't fly the same kites every year. 
I will design new, new kinds for next year's uh, festival. Like uh, this year is the year of dog. I created the dog kite. As you were entering 88, we it is hard to, to believe that you are still flying the kites and you still have the enthusiasm. I can show you some pictures of the flower kites I just mentioned. There is a strong light outdoors. It's the ground kite. It doesn't fly high. It's uh, just uh, about two meters high from the ground. And. Uh, it will look like the flower circle plant on the ground. If there is breeze, this will be very beautiful. And uh, it can shake uh, tightly in the wind. He can send you the photos later. As you have uh, so many kites at home, which one is your favorite and which one is uh, the most uh, proud design of you? That's uh, the wild goose. Because the its wing can move on the sky, and it's uh, just like the real wild goose. So, where did your inspiration originate from? It came to my mind time after time, and I would take notes. I also did research on materials and uh, find uh, some shapes and uh, I paint and I design the shape. We've uh, seen um, different types of kites and uh, it is uh, so rare to see so many experts here. So I want to help my our netizens to ask him more questions. I went to the U.S. and Europe. Uh, best wishes for you. My name is Art Sin. He is also born to a kite family. He ride horses. He can fly three of uh, the kites at the same time, and he can fly the kites with uh, his legs. He m also made uh, these kites by himself. These uh, kites are uh, the type of sports. So what's the difference? Uh, you can adjust uh, the angle of this kite, like uh, upward, upward or downward. It's just like uh, flying uh, the airplane. And I can also fly the kites by my legs. And I stick them to my legs. And I can also uh, fly the kites uh, 
with my rest and with my waist. So, uh, what wind do you need to fly up the skies? Uh, the wind needs to be above uh, level 4. And uh, what's the feeling while uh, many cats are on your body? It's comfortable. Because I learned martial art in the past, I learned it in the Shaolin Temple. Can you perform it to us? Martial art is also a dream for many people. Uh, because I learned martial art, my legs can be stabilized. The people who don't uh, cannot play martial art, uh, it may be very difficult for them to fly up the kites uh, and at the same time. Uh, because it will be very easy to fall onto the ground. So what kind of martial arts you have been learned? You know some uh, special tricks that have learned from Shaolin Temple. Some of the viewer has been asking uh, how many times we have been hosting this kite festival, and uh, this time is actually the second Dunhuang International Kite Festival, and also his first time to came here. It is uh, very beautiful in Dunhuang city and we really want to enjoy the blue sky and flying the kites. And in this area we also have many open spaces. It's easier for you to launch the kite. So how many of this? We have five kites. And uh, we will see the power of the wind and decide how many kites I'm going to launch. And I will still uh, tie the fly line with my legs and then I run backwards to launch the kites. Yes, you have to run backwards. If you do different moves and then you can change the direction of the kite, that's the way how I steer the kite. I'm using a different way to launch the kite. If you're running in the wrong position or direction, then you cannot launch the kite. It requires special techniques and strength. And actually I don't have to see the kite. I can turn back against the uh, kite, but the kite are still on the sky. So, actually I don't need to see the kites. I can do martial arts. Okay, we will see how you perform. And uh, we can also see the beautiful tricks of the martial arts. Can you give us some moves of the martial arts? Do you practice a lot? Not really, not now. So when did you start to learn martial arts? At my age of 17 or 18, I learned martial arts in Taiwan. I practiced for four or five years. When I was very young, I was quite weak and easily got sick. And then my father just sent me to the martial arts training center to do some training. I have been practicing for four to five years. And I get much better in my physical condition. Previously, I'm very thin, but now I'm more stronger. So flying kites also require physical strength. Actually, I'm 68 years old this year. Well, it's really hard to tell how old are you because you, do, you, you look very energetic. I'm looking forward for your performance. Yes, of course, but I have to see the wind. Thank you.
So did you design all of these kites? For these three, I designed them by myself. I want to make that specialized. Even though we are seeing that the people are flying kites, uh, actually they are flying up their dreams. They are flying up their aspirations. I really like travel around the world and uh, I have met uh, some of the uh, kite lovers. And uh, we also see some of the kites have the thing of peace. When you're flying up that kind of kite on the sky, meaning that um, people are actually in pursuit of peace. And some of the kites, they're quite long, like 40 to 50 meters. But still, we have to uh, see the wind power to see whether they're suitable for launch the kite. Now we are at the Dunhuang city of Gansu province to bring you the live streaming. And today is the second Dunhuang International Kite Festival. Today we have 12 um, delegation from different countries to have a competition. And later uh, we will see the performance. Now the opening ceremony is started, but today we don't have a very good condition for the kite and all the kites are in good preparation and they are waiting for the wind now i saw some pictures it's very nice for the launch of the kite Let's see some of the photo. Not sure if we can see it cl clearly. Let's take a look at the photo. It's actually a short video. You can see he's really uh, playing martial arts. He's launching the kite, not just using his hands, but also his legs. You can see he's doing different kinds of uh, moves. All of those are martial arts moves. It requires a lot of strength and power. So it makes kite flying into a sports event. the sunlight is too strong mm, but we just give you a flavor of uh, how it looks like so when you are flying the kite you have to fight against the resistance of the wind thank you so much look forward to performance and some of the viewers also ask uh, the venue and the time for this international kite festival each year, Dunhuang will host this international kite festival. Delegations from all around the world will come here to launch their kites. So you can see different shapes and the varieties of kites. You will see some uh, traditional kites and some modern kites. Some of the designs are coming from uh, foreign friends and some of the designs with Chinese characteristics. Now we can see the open ceremony already started and we see huge crowds of people gathering here. Mm. 
So for the venue for this festival, it actually takes place in Dunhuang International Convention and Exhibition Center. Dunhuang will also host a cultural exhibition. So by that time, people from around the world will gather here to make cultural exchanges. So this place is also considered as a cultural exchange site since Han Dynasty. So the Kite Festival is just a start and later Dunhuang will host other cultural activities. So what is the largest kite for today's festival? Let's take a look. We have made it ready, but now we don't see much wind here, but see if our people uh, can uh, launch the kite. We call it the uh, rolling dragon with the diameter of 34 meters. It is the largest kite in the world. Actually today, it's the debut of the Rolling Dragon today. So it is the debut of the Rolling Dragon. For the Rolling Dragon, if we fly up to the sky, it will be higher than the uh, exhibition center. It is in the shape of dragon and it is actually the largest kite in the world. And uh, we will launch this kite pretty soon. It's very large in size. So all of these are flying lines. We need 80 flying lines to launch the kite. If you don't have 80 flying lines, you're not able to launch the kite. Again, this is the largest kite in the world. And for the length is uh, 88 meters in total. So maybe now we can gather some volunteers to help to launch the kite. And we have to check the direction of the wind. And we have to adjust the angle for the kite according to the direction of the wind. It will be a very magnificent view when we launch the rolling dragon. So we have to manually steer the direction of the kite. Is it difficult to launch the kite? Definitely, we need at least 20 people to launch the kite. So all of these people, uh, they will hold the flying line and drag the kite. Now we are about to launch this giant kite. We need more people to participate in this process. So maybe we need to adjust the position because the wind direction is the key for the launch. We see some smaller kites up in the sky. And um, for the larger size kites, uh, we still need to wait for the wind. 
hopefully during this live streaming we can have uh, some proper wings which help us to launch this giant kite as you can see so many people are participating in this process to launch the kite it requires coordination But still, we don't see a good condition in the wind. So we will see if we can use the uh, manpower to launch this kite, the Rolling Dragon, which is the largest kite in the world. I want to get closer to see how they communicate with each other and to see the coordination we have to be careful about the uh, lines there is a uh, one critical safety element while flying kites that's to prevent yourself from being hurt from the stream We will use the manpower to fly up this kite. We are still adjusting the direction. And we need to adjust it according to the current wind direction. Stay there. We need to wait for a moment before running. Please stay in that corner. Just uh, shake it. Many small keys are approaching the big kite flying zone. This is dangerous. Okay, the direction of this big kite uh, has been ready. Firstly, we inject uh, wind by manpower. You keep it high and uh, let's uh, work together. Please 
ask the kids to stay away from this area. Please don't move. I will fly it slowly. The kite is uh, slowly up. More than 80 strings are controlling this kite uh, at the same time. We cannot uh, pull it now. We need to wait. We need to fly it up uh, slowly. In order to ensure the sketch spreading out of the whole shape. Slowly, slowly. Keep it slow, slowly. Yes, uh, they need to coordinate uh, in a very good and a strict way, because some people are pulling it up. Okay, the largest rolling dragon kite is uh, flying up. So, they, uh, Mr. Liu needs to leave uh, the kite. Twenty of them are flying the one kite. Due to the restriction of this small area, when they were running, the kite fell. So the first uh, trial failed, but this is where the joy lies in. We will readjust the kite and uh, fly it again because uh, the wind was too uh, light and uh, the area is not large, it's not expensive enough. The kite uh, fell on the ground. Uh, we can look back and uh, explain why the kite fell to the ground because here is uh, the audience uh, stage and uh, they have uh, no further way for running. And we choose another plan that's to lengthen the running way. And this uh, may contribute to the successful flying of the kite.
we are live streaming at uh, the Dunhuang International Kite Festival. This is the second uh, kite festival here. And today there were 12 uh, delegations uh, from the world and they bring their masterpieces uh, to compete with each other here. And now, at the opening ceremony area, there is a section for the keys painting, kinds painting. There are uh, hundreds of uh, primary students. They are painting the kites and um, making the kites. And later on, when the wind uh, becomes proper, they will fly up the kites made by themselves. And now we are at the main area for flying kites. The professional artists uh, for kites are gathering here. And now we are watching the flying of the rolling dragon kite. This year's uh, kite festival lasted for two days. That's today and tomorrow. And during these two days, you can see many uh, types of uh, flexible kites uh, or the multi-piece uh, kites, uh, traditional kites or modern kites and sport kites. Uh. And there is a giant uh, phoenix and dragon. And uh, the picking opera characteristics they are all, all the highlights of this year's uh, kite festival. But today, because the wind is too small, we haven't yet uh, seen the giant kites, the staff uh, making efforts. On this year's uh, kite festival, uh, we will see the giant uh, dragon kite. It's uh, a forty, a four meters high. There were other cultural performances at scene. I want to also mention here there is a special activity that many students are participating in the making of the kites and there are professional artists and craftsmen teaching them how to make kites from the waste products and this is very uh, environmental friendly and uh, after the kites uh, fly up in the sky it will be very beautiful and this uh, kite festival is also open to the society The uh, biggest uh, kite is uh, under the second uh, trial for flying and uh, they are adjusting it.
Now we're still waiting for the wind to spread out the kite. And later we will have the manpower to pull the kite. For kites, there were many legends about kites and some cultural connotation of kites. And today we have a special guest here to give us some introduction about kites. I'm Chen Ye. I'm from Dunhuang. I've been studying the uh, folk, customer, and the uh, culture in Dunhuang for decades. Speak of kites, uh, it has a long history. Can you give us some brief introduction about the history of the kite? For kite, it has around 2,000 history in China. And Mozi invented the first, what we called, kite, the wooden bird, and later on, his student Lu Ban made some improvement for the kite. At the early stage, kite is not used for entertainment, it is used for military purposes to trans transmit information. After East Han Dynasty and uh, kite was made of silk and later paper was used to make kite. And in Chang and Song Dynasty, uh, paper is quite cheap and uh, affordable. That's why people use paper to make kites. And in the warning state, uh, there's another craftsman, also have the same name with Lu Ban. And uh, for the person uh, from the Dunhuang in the Wuling state, uh, he's quite specialized in making kites. At the time, uh, he lived away from his lover and he made a wooden bird which he used to pass the letters. And later, the family found that um, they are passing the letters through the kite. And he also uh, fly up the kite in uh, uh, Zhejiang province. And the kite uh, fell down in Zhejiang province. And people thought it is a monster. And uh, during that time, the weather condition is quite hot and they're suffering from drought. And Lu Ban thought that the wooden bird will not bring good luck and also 
causing some devastating consequences. So that's why later people are not made of kites from the wood. Even though it is a legend, but there are some stories about kites 2,000 years ago. But at that time, we could calling them wooden bird because the kite at that time was made of wood. For this kind of uh, kite, it is made of uh, paper. That's why we call it paper kite. For the kite, there were two types. The first one is the paper kite, as the one I'm holding. And the other one, uh, we put some instruments or whistles on the kite. That's why we call them wind instrument, which means feng zheng in Chinese. So at that time, when you fly up the kite, you can also hear the wind blowing the instruments on the sky. And I also heard that in ancient times, some people actually sitting uh, on the kite. It is a aspiration for people who want to go up to the sky and take airplanes. So it is a very nice aspiration for the people at that time. And for this one, uh, the peony represents um, fortune and prosperous. So we also put some hopes and inspirations into the design of the kite. So kite is not just a uh, toy, so people will also put their hopes and best wishes into the sky through spring outing, through, through flying out the kite. Actually, it is the most popular activity in Song Dynasty. Speak of Dunhuang, uh, we can see a lot of elements about uh, aircraft, and we also uh, see some wall paintings in the Mokao grottoes in Dunhuang. And uh, also we see a lot of the famous uh, musical instruments in Dunhuang. And in the early times, people will want to attach those musical instruments on the kite. Also, people put some uh, decora decorations, uh, silk and tails attaching them to the kite. You just want to fly up all of these best wishes to the sky. Again, let's take a look on the side here. Even though we haven't seen any launch of the kites, but um, the groups, uh, the delegations are working really hard to prepare the kites. In the past, the Dunhuang are not using bamboo to make the kite. And the people are using a kind of uh, straw to make the kite. Because in the past, Dunhuang doesn't have any bamboo strip. So they will use some existing materials uh, to make the kite. So let's get closer. Now they're shouting uh, slower and slower. careful about the pace. You have to be careful.
Okay, now we can see the kite has been successfully launched. You can see so many people, they are working really hard to launch the kite. It requires hard work because today um, there's not much wind. That's why these people have to pull really hard. It's such a pity and we have to stop it. And we just uh, seen the moment when the kite was up in the sky. If we have a nice wind, maybe we can see another view. With the joint efforts, at least uh, we capture a moment that the kite was flying in the sky. We do see a lot of restrictions on the site and also the weather condition. And this kind, uh, the kite uh, was blocked by the uh, flagpole. So the second time we still fail. But now we can see some of the smaller kites that uh, have already flying up in the sky. These are smaller sizes. Because the wind is strong enough, that's why it's very difficult for the larger size kite to be launched. Now we can see different shape and uh, different types of uh, kites are flying in the sky. And this one is also a multi-piece kite, kite uh, which says, uh, sends the greeting of Dunhuang. Because of the wind, uh, we can hardly see these kites are flying. There we go, oh, we see the uh, characters Dunhuang welcomes you. But it feels like one of the uh, kites breaks its frame. That's why we cannot see the character clearly. But that's the joy. Because not every time you can be succeed. And we also see some cultural performance in the opening ceremony. And the rooster uh, from the Taiwan artist, you can see the rooster uh, flying in the sky. It's very cute. And the other one, a giant dragon. 
this one is actually not dragon but comparing to human body it's a giant how long is this kite 15 meters the wind uh, is uh, too small this dragon head uh, is more than one kilogram so how heavy it is it's about two kilograms so what level of wind does he need a two to three levels today there is lack of wind So it is difficult to fly it up. It's my second time here. Did you register it by yourself or you have a delegation? I'm from Weifang delegation. It's a pity today is uh, the wind is not very strong. Or rather we can demonstrate our kites like uh, the phoenix and uh, the wild goose and the big shark which is a uh, tens of meters long the kites uh, we're flying are the board shaped kites or uh, the uh, winged kites and this one is the multi-piece kites we need to go with the wind and it takes uh, at least uh, two persons one is uh, for the string of the head, one is for the string of the tail. And we need to keep it straight. And uh, the one at the tail will follow my pace and uh, listen to my direction. And we need to coordinate with each other. Like, or rather, the kite may fall. We are looking forward uh, to the situation, to the scene of the dragon and the phoenix. This year's kite festival attracts uh, a lot of photographers, and they are sh taking photos of the kites. Let's move to the other section. It's the sea slug or a insect. Next, uh, other kites are uh, also ready to be flied up. 
and now the remaining, the smaller size, the kites on the sky. Is this one yours? It's uh, the American kite flyers. The man in red. Uh, this one is a shape of ladybird, and it's not uh, fully spread it out. Many parents uh, with their kids. We can see many citizens are helping them to fly the kites. Hope their love uh, can be flight up to the sky. It's um, the sculpture of uh, this uh, kite artist and uh, his wife. They are smiling happily. The wind is too small, but we've seen it on the sky just now. And now we are at the opening um, scene of uh, the kite festival, and this uh, one is also on the sky. There is a still lack of wind. Be careful of the string. At uh, this opening scene, there is uh, the painting activity of the primary students. Uh, let's uh, go there and have a look. We see the kite artists are uh, helping each other. I want to try it again. You help him. Yes, we assist each other. So for today's wind, uh, your board kite um, may be difficult to fly up. Not now. The wind is uh, 
less than level two, so it will fall. But with the C as a demonstration in the sky, we've uh, showed it uh, to the viewers. And let's uh, move there. Thank you. Be careful if the strings. The children are enjoying themselves. And we can see there is the cultural performances at scene. What does this performance uh, show? It's uh, the traditional Dunhuang dance. Uh, we know some uh, Dunhuang paintings. Uh, they have uh, the flying as abstrus uh, figure, and uh, the performance they are showing now is also part of the silk and road uh, performance. We can sense uh, this uh, flying shape has been involved in many cultural figures. The children are safeguarding their kites. How big is this one? Uh, they are painting the kites. And this one is about uh, 12 meters uh, long. The kids are painting their dreams on the kites. And uh, their inner world. This is the very pure wish of the children. Why we set uh, this place uh, for the uh, kite festival? Because uh, we can also broadcast uh, Dunhuang culture, like uh, the Culture Expo. Yes, uh, Dunhuang culture is uh, for world famous, and uh, combined it with uh, Weifang, we can make this uh, festival a name card of our city and uh, generate it uh, to a future years. Uh, we hold it annually. We hope uh, to avail this opportunity and make it the name card of Dunhuang. These children are local students. Yeah, they are from the kindergarten. And they organized uh, this event uh, voluntarily. And they come here to paint uh, the kite. So 
also the plan is that the children first bring the kites and later on they will uh, fly out the kites but due to the condition maybe today they are not able to fly out the kites but fortunately we have another day for the kite festival so if you can visit Dunhuang so maybe tomorrow you can see some giant kite flying in the sky uh, according to the weather forecast, uh, the wind will come up at noon. So maybe afternoon, the children can fly up their kites. So even though it seems very simple to make a kite, but um, everyone has to make efforts in order to make the kite and make the design. And also the design requires higher standards. And we actually bring a kite uh, from Weifang and we made it a finished that uh, last night. So a lot of joint efforts to make the kite. So today we can see a very lively atmosphere. We see the parents, the children, they're all coming here to enjoy the festival. Even though today uh, the wind is not strong enough, uh, but still uh, we feel very happy that these people gather together to enjoy the springtime. But again, I want to remind you, be careful about the flying line. Well, uh, we see one kite flying up in the sky. That is the uh, slogan, Dunhuang welcomes you. But still, the wind is not very good today. You see so many uh, flying images up the sky in Dunhuang and also many stories uh, in Dunhuang. So we know that today uh, not just the flying kites are flying in the sky, uh, it is the uh, aspiration that are flying in the sky. Especially in Jiu Quan, um, it reminds me about the uh, aircraft, the space mission. So uh, we are stepping closer to the dream of entering into the space. So in spring, we really want um, all the people can fly up their dreams, and their dreams can come true. That's the end of the live broadcasting. Thank you for watching.